Hey, well, Aaron Suttles, The Athletic. How fresh are you right now after having a couple weeks off? And, and over the course of the season, you obviously have a lot of natural ability, great first step, explosives, speed and all that. But how much do you feel like your pass rush moves have improved over the course of the season? You know, um, I think they improved a lot. You know, I'm feeling good. You know, this little break we had was really good to spend time with our family and just regroup and get our bodies back right. But as far as like pass rush moves and, you know, just this whole break we have had, I've been, been able to um, – just take a step back and really get back to my fundamentals of, you know, me using my hands or, you know, different moves. And a lot of it goes, a lot of it goes back to just counter moves and stuff like that. So I think this whole um, break that we've had so far, I think I just went back to my technique of working my hands better, getting to my uh, secondary move, you know, if my primary move doesn't work. So it's been good. Next question will come from Nick Kelly of the Tuscaloosa news. Go ahead, Nick. Hey, well, uh, obviously Bryce is a, is a pretty calm guy, but, uh, in terms of his competitiveness and that competitive fire, um, how would you describe that? You know, I would describe it as one of a kind, you know, for him to stay with his composure and, you know, he leads the offense the way he does. I mean, I tell him all the time, my hat's off to him. You know, I try to take little things from Bryce's game as far as the aspects of being a leader and staying composed and not getting frustrated. I think Bryce does a great job of that and I respect him a lot for it. Your next question comes from Charlie Potter of Bama Online. Go ahead, Charlie. Yeah, hey, Will. Um, you know, Coach Golden kind of talked about this a minute ago, but as a leader, just what's your message to your teammates about not only following the the COVID protocols, but focusing on the real reason you guys are in Dallas is to, to win a football game? You know, most definitely. I agree with Coach, what Coach Golden was saying. You know, as a leadership group, we came together and we just have to tell the team, like, we know what's at stake. It's either win or go home. And, you know, we don't want to go home. We want to win. And I think the biggest thing was just, uh, it was like a medical call. You know, I think everybody just needs to be locked in on what's going on right now. And the main focus is winning this game and being all in. Nobody needs to be distracted, going out, running the streets, anything like that. And I think when you have a group of guys like that on leadership, that, you know, we all could come to the same thing. Nobody was being selfish. You know, everybody had a, a mutual understanding of, like, you, we know what's going on. It was really good. And, you know, with the team, you know, most guys would be like, uh, complaining and stuff like that. The team has responded very well. There hasn't been any complaining, no negativity. Um, nobody's been a cancer. Everybody responded the right way, and practice has been great, and I think that's what it's all about. For those of you just joining us, we have Will Anderson, Jr. If you have a question, use the raise hand function, and we will get to your question. Next, we'll go to Katie Wyndham of Bamas Central. Go ahead, Katie. Will, kind of bouncing off Charlie's question about leadership, <clears throat> Coach Golding was just saying that you and Henry kind of motivate guys in different ways on the defense. Um, kind of talk about y'all's differences in leadership, but why it's both important, uh, why it's important for both of y'all um, to lead in the areas you do. Um, I think for me, I'm more of the vocal leader than um, Henry is. Henry is more of a, um, he's going to show up through his actions. He's going to be real positive. He's not, he's going to come to work every day. Um, he's not going to say much, but he's going to show you through his actions. And, you know, you have no choice but to follow. And he's right in the center of our defense, so everybody has to follow exactly what Henry's saying. Henry's a great leader, but me on the other side, I just try to be that more vocal leader, you know, make sure everybody's doing the right thing, you know, um, holding everybody accountable so we can all be on the same page and everything can get done. So I think when you have two leaders like that on defense, everything works out great. Okay, our next question will come from Mitch Lucas. Go ahead, Mitch. Hey, well, I hope you guys are having a great week. Um, I am from the Kilgore News Herald in, in East Texas. Just wanted to ask kind of a two-fold question. Taking yourself out of the mix, we always expect you to, to have a, a big game. Who could you see on defense stepping up, having a huge game uh, against Cincinnati? And one more, uh, if I can go ahead and ask, can you talk a little bit about seeing Jamison Williams in practice? Can you tell us a little bit – what has he added to Alabama's uh, offense this year? Um, well, I'm not going to sit up here and put any pressure on nobody on the team. I'm hoping that everybody on the defense has a great game and have a big game and we all can go out there and play on the same page. We all can fly out there and have fun and everybody um, – play together. So, you know, I think that's the biggest thing going into a game like this, especially a playoff game that everybody has a big game because, like, again, we know what's at stake and everybody needs to be on their P's and Q's and everybody needs to have football on their mind and making it the uh, main thing. As far as Jamison Williams, um, he's been electrifying this year. You know, he's really another leader on the offense that's not really talked about because he has so much energy. He really gets those guys going a lot. Like, I was just watching a video of him. I didn't know he even be doing some of the things that he be doing when he scores the touchdown. But, you know, his energy, you know, I think they feed off that energy. Him making plays, you know, him being a vocal leader, telling him let's go if something's going bad or something like that. He's been a great leader on the offensive side, and I don't think he gets enough recognition for that. But he's been electrifying this year. He's been a great addition to the offense, and we love him. Okay, well, next go to Joseph Goodman. Go ahead, Joseph. 
Yeah. Hey, uh, what, what was your favorite Christmas gift this year? Mm. All of them. I can't think of them all about. No, I tell you, it was a hoodie I got. Uh, it was like this um, this brown hoodie I had, and it had like a different colors and stuff like that. It was pretty. It was pretty dope. My sister had got it for me, so it was dope. I like that one. That was probably my favorite Christmas gift. All right next, we'll go to Caleb Squires. Caleb, go ahead. Hiya, thanks, Will. Um, I just wanted to kind of quickly ask you about the challenges of facing this Cincinnati offense. Obviously, you know, in the SEC, you're playing against the best of the best uh, nationwide. What similarities do you see between Cincinnati and, and SEC competition that you've already played? And how do you feel about this matchup uh, on New Year's Eve? Most definitely the offensive line and their quarterback. I feel like uh, all year we've seen great offensive lines that's really big, can move, maulers, and protect their quarterback really well. And as far as quarterbacks goes, we've seen a lot of quarterbacks like um, him this year. You know, they're fast, can move out the pocket, can make plays with their arms, can run. So as far as that, that's like the SEC and the games that we be playing this year. Um, you know, they have a really good offensive line that protect really well. Their quarterback is outstanding. You know, he can make plays down the field with his arm. He can run. He can escape the pocket. So it's going to be a really good challenge for us, and we just have to be ready. And next we'll go to Kerry with WVTM. Go ahead, Kerry. Hey, Will, I want to ask you, I know your coach has said this before, that he kind of prefers that underdog mentality, and it worked well for you guys in the SEC Championship. In this matchup, of course, a lot of the outside noise is that since he is the underdog coming into this, I'm curious what your preference is, and how does that impact you, the outside noise, ahead of these big games? Um, To me, I still feel like we're the underdog in this game. I mean, you know, all year we have been disrespected. I'm pretty sure we're still probably getting disrespected out there. But right now, we're not really worried about the external factors right now. We just have to worry about what's going on inside the facility and the practice field and all the meetings and stuff like that. And I think that's our biggest concern right now, making sure that we're ready and prepared for this game. Okay, we'll go back to Aaron Settles. Uh, Aaron, go ahead. Well, you know, you know how much an athlete and, and what confidence can do for an athlete. And the, you know, the vice versa is true, too. When you don't have a lot of confidence, it can show itself on the field. But do you feel like the performance you guys had against Georgia – did that give you guys confidence? And if so, how are you seeing that since that since that game? You know, since the Georgia game, I, I mean, I've been so proud of the guys because the intensity, the energy hasn't dropped off one bit. You know, practice has been really well. Meetings have been really well. Uh, walkthroughs have been really well. And the, the way that we've taken that energy from that game and had a break as long as we have, and if the energy is still rolling and everybody's still ready to play. And everybody still has that same mindset. It's been great. And I'm so proud of those guys. And we just have to keep it rolling into the game this weekend. Next, we'll go to Michael Casagrande. Go ahead, Michael. Hey, well, you just mentioned that Alabama was was being disrespectful. We lost you there for a second, Michael. Go ahead. Can you hear me now? There you go. Good. Yeah, well, you said just a minute ago that Alabama's been disrespected and, and it continues to be. I guess, where do you hear that? What's the disrespect coming in? How do you channel that? You know, we challenge it as positive energy. You know, um, we love it. It just fuels us up even more. You know, we know what type of team we have. We don't really worry about what other people have to say about us. But, you know, we can use it as fuel because we just have to keep proving people that they're wrong and that we are an elite team and we can play very well. Okay, next we'll go to Aaron Suttles. Aaron, go ahead. You already got me. I'm good. All right. Got another one from Kerry from WVTM. Kerry? So, well, uh, you seem like you like to have a lot of fun, and I know these bowl weeks obviously provide that, but not in, during a pandemic. And I'm curious, how has that impacted the team just to not enjoy that part of the bowl week and to be, you know, kind of segregated again, once again, from media and all this kind of impersonal stuff? You know, like I said earlier, you know, um, the energy has been really good. Well, you know, nobody's been complaining about anything. Like I said, we know it's at stake. So, um, and I told the team um, when we had talked, you know, we all we got and we all we need, you know, we uh we we know the biggest focus. We know what we have to do. Uh, we can't let anybody you know go out and go get COVID and bring it back and stuff like that. So you know the team has handled that very well. I mean we have a hospitality uh, section that uh, I know all the guys on the team love to play video games and different type of games and stuff like that. And we can all hang out and stuff like that. So it's been good. We have that little aspect of it, you know, just to go in there and chill and you know do those type of different activities and stuff like that. So you know we have a little lounge where we can you know play and just be in a safe environment. So it's been good. All right, next, we'll go back to Michael Casagrande. Michael, do you have another? No, that you got me. 
All right. If you have a question, please use the raise hand function. And we've got a couple more minutes. Uh, questions with Will. We'll wait just a moment. All right, we'll go back to Mike Rodak. Go ahead, Mike. Well, just what's it been like having Chris Allen around the team this year, even though he hasn't been able to play since, the, uh, you know, the opening game when he got hurt? You know, with Chris being a vet and Chris being going through so much, and, you know, he's been around the program a long time, and he knows so much about football. Um, you know, me, I kind of like uh, – I don't know as much as Chris does, so I can't, like, sometimes help some of the guys on certain things, but he has stepped in that role – of, you know, he, him not being able to play. And, you know, he see different things that, you know, what um, he can help. And, like, if somebody mess up or they don't quite understand, he fills in that role to them, like, hey, this is how you do that, you know, stuff like that. So he's been a great leader. I mean, man, especially in the outside linebacker room with us being so young and stuff like that. He's He showed tremendous leadership, great energy. You know, um, he's, all, he's always been positive around us. He just keeps us uplifted. Sometimes when we get tired and stuff like that, he just keep, tells us to keep pushing and stuff like that. So he's been a great leader and a great big brother to us. And we love him so much and we thank him. All right, we'll go to Carrie with WVTM. Go ahead, Carrie. Thank you. So, Will, I know you don't know uh, Jerome Ford. You obviously didn't play with him at Alabama, but knowing that he's coming to this game and it's a little bit surreal that he's playing his former team and there's all these storylines. I'm curious what you guys as a team has talked about and, and the people that do know him well and possibly are friends with him, what they've talked about ahead of that matchup. You know, whatever I heard about him has always been positive. It's never been nothing bad. You know, um, we know it's going to be a great challenge for us, but from everything I've heard about him, he had great character. He was a great athlete. Um, and just watching film, you know, he can make a lot of plays. Uh, he has great shiftness, uh, quickness. He can move. Um, so it's going to be a really good challenge for us, but as far as anything I've ever heard, it's always been great stuff, and we're ready for the challenge. Okay, we'll take one final question from Aaron Settles. Go ahead, Aaron. Well, take yourself back to the first time you saw Dallas Turner, and he's a wide-eyed freshman out there probably running around to where he is now, how would you explain that journey and how, and how much improvement he's made? Um, he's made a lot of improvement. Um, the first time I seen Dallas, you know, he's like any other freshman, you know, a little nervous, overthinking everything. But what I expressed to Dallas was, you know, something that was really big with me last year was don't overthink because it's going to slow you down a lot. You're not going to be able to play fast. You're not going to be able to do what you want to do. And then you're going to be wondering, like, are you good enough? Da -da 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 -da. And I tried to tell him, like, just take it one play at a time. And I think once he started his second game and he started taking it one play at a time and he started, um, you know, recognize what was going on. Dallas is a very smart player. Great instincts can move, too. So when he started, like, slowing the game down for himself and started playing really, like, to his ability, you know, it's been really good for him. Um, he hasn't been overthinking. He's, like I said, he's super smart. And I think that's one of the best gifts he has. He's so smart that he knows what things are coming sometimes. But, you know, just I try to express him, like, just take it one play at a time. And he's been doing a great job. And just seeing his confidence grow and continue to grow and how much potential he has and how – good he is going to be. I'm really excited about Dallas. Well, thank you for